Okay, let's talk about subtense bars. Subtense bars. What are subtense bars? They're actually pretty cool. Subtense bars. Subtense bars are just bars um, that are usually made from some special type of metal that don't change in length due to just natural temperature changes. Um, obviously, if you dip the bar in lava, it would possibly deform somehow. Pretend you were, pretend you're a bird, and you're looking down on this field where you see a bunch of people doing surveying. Okay, so pretend you're a bird and you're looking down, and you notice, I'm not sure how a bird would know, have this knowledge, but you recognize this instrument. Somebody has this instrument, and they're measuring, and there's this, there's this subtense bar, okay, placed horizontally, okay, this is different from the rod, rods are usually placed vertically on the ground, um, <clears throat> subtense bars are placed horizontally, flat. And remember, you're a bird, so you're flying over and you're looking down, so this is a top-down view, and this instrument, this person, here's, here's the person's head from the top, top, this instrument is measuring out a certain distance, okay? Subtense bars are good to figure out um, approximate horizontal distances from the instrument to whatever point uh, you want to know the distance to, okay? And in our case, subten this subtense bar is, um, let's, let's dimension this, it's 1.000 meters, and then 1.000 meters. So this is a two meter subtense bar, okay? And this instrument is siding to this point, okay? And what this instrument is going to do is that it's going to turn, it's going to turn counterclockwise first, so that way, and measure to this point, to the end of the subtense bar. Did I say that right? Counterclockwise? Yes. And then it's going to go clockwise. And it's going to measure out. Oops, that was totally off. It's going to measure out this point. And these two angles should be about the same. <clears throat> okay? And we'll call the site from the instrument to this point, we'll call that HD. And all HD stands for, it's not high definition. It's a it's horizontal distance. Okay? And we can um, figure out what the approximate horizontal distance is by just trigonometry. So if I said the tangent of this angle alpha, tangent is equal to, you remember from trig, it's equal to opposite um, over adjacent, so it's 1, 1 1.000 meters over adjacent, and adjacent is HD, is what you're trying to find, the horizontal distance. If you multiply both sides by HD and divide by tan, tangent of alpha, you'll get horizontal distance is 1.000 meters divided by tangent of alpha, okay? So the approximate horizontal distance um, using a subtense bar um, is one meter, or whatever half of the subtense bar is. In this case, it's a two meter subtense bar, so half of that would be two. Um, and it's assuming you you sight to the to the middle of the subtense bar. Then you figure out your angles by sighting to the um, ends of this bar. Using trigonometry, you can figure out the horizontal distance is 1 over 10 alpha. So let's let's apply this. And remember, you were a bird looking down. Now, let's let's apply this to three wire uh, leveling, but from the ground. So you're you're back to being a person, okay? And you have your instrument on the ground, All right? And let's say. Let's say this is your rod. This is your rod. And using three wire leveling, 
you sight the middle. Remember, you're looking through this telescope and with these crosshairs with the mark above and below um, the middle. Okay, you sight the middle, then you move up a little, and you sight the top, then you move down about the same angle. Well, I guess you don't have to move because the crosshairs are already pointing to the top, middle, and bottom. Okay, so you look through the telescope and you read the first tick mark, the middle, and the bottom to get your T, M, and B measurements. Okay, and remember, we said that the top minus the middle is half stadium, and the middle minus bottom is also half stadium. So top minus bottom would be a full stadium. Right? Now, if this angle should be the same, okay, alpha, if we said tangent of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, opposite is half stadia, delta over 2, and the adjacent side is your horizontal distance. Okay? So it's from the measure, from the instrument to the middle reading. Again, let's solve for HD. HD becomes delta divided by 2 over tan of alpha. Okay? And really the only thing that changes in this in this equation, the only input that changes is delta. Your delta can be different different heights or different measurements depending on how close or how far the rod is from your instrument. So really we can say that the divided by 2 and the tan alpha, we can consider that a constant because that doesn't change um, for, for all the readings we take. <clears throat> it's always constant. So let's call that constant, let's call it K. <clears throat> and K stands for the instrument constant. Instrument constant. Okay? <clears throat> And usually, this is kind of a rule of thumb, usually it's it's just 100. K is equal to 100, unless the instrument specifically tells you that K is some other number other than 100. So for our examples, we'll always use 100. <clears throat> now, if, if we said the divided by 2 tan alpha is a constant, we can say, or and that constant is equal to k, we can say that the horizontal distance is simply delta times k, where k is usually 100. So whatever um, difference you get from the top and bottom, that would be your delta. You multiply that by k, or in our case 100, and you would get your approximate horizontal distance. Okay? We will do a quick stadia example in the next video.